The leader of the economic freedom fighters has been crisscrossing the country in the last couple of months, attending the provincial people's assemblies at the parties as the party elects new provincial structures there. This as the country prepares for the 2024 general elections. To speak to us more about the party's plans and where the country is at the moment, Let's speak to EFF leader now, Julius Malema, who's in studio with me. Thank you very much for making the time. Good wow. to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks indeed. Let's uh, get straight into the Human Rights Commission. Yeah. Let's start there. They have said that your statements uttered at the People's Assembly in the Western Cape, those comments were tantamount to incitement, mm -hmm. and they would like you to retract and do so publicly. Otherwise, the roads lead to the Equality Court. Are you willing to retract the statement? But how do you, as a neutral board, just make a, a decision without talking to the other side? Because they never said to me, we received these complaints about you. Hmm. What is your explanation? All I hear is that retract these statements uh, in the next 10 days or else we're going to court. Um, so you can see there is no neutrality and they say there was display of posters at the EFF uh, People's Assembly in the Western Cape. Those posters, you will know, are from 2013 um, uh, launch of the EFF in Marikana. Yeah. So someone went to remanufacture those posters and then sent to the uh, Human Rights Commission. It doesn't even do investigation on basic things that those things, EFF distance itself from those posters which were displayed in Marikana. Now the Human Rights Commission says they were displayed in the Western Cape. Yeah. Because if they had asked for an explanation from the EFF before coming into this determination, they would have given them information that this is actually wrong. This was from 2013, mm -hmm. and the EFF is on record distancing itself from this. This is the context within which those things that you are saying are an incitement uh, were made, and therefore do not constitute any incitement the human rights commission you say it's clearly taken a position it's no longer a neutral body Absolutely. and you are not going to explain yourself before them why do you take that posture Golly, you get information about me that this is the things i said mm. you ought to come to me and say these are the allegations that are being made against you what do you have to say what do you do? You conclude and say, this is what you must do. Mm. And what must I say? You have already taken a decision about me. You can as well decide what you want to do with me. But I'm not going to apologize in 10 days. I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, they would rather take us to court. We have no problem going to court. Uh, and they will uh, argue our case in court. But that body must be ashamed of itself. Because the most basic principle of... Uh, uh, equality before the law mm. is such that you must hear both sides. That, that principle has been violated. That body, yes. Mr. Malema, is a Chapter 9 institution. And on the radio this morning, if I heard them correctly, mm -hmm. they are of the view that many of their recommendations, so they conduct investigations and their recommendations simply get ignored. Why am I saying this to you? You are a member of parliament. That makes you a lawmaker. Do you not run the risk of denigrating the stature of that body? Shouldn't you be leading by example and saying, okay, we'll comply because this is a constitutional body? You're asking me to be violated because I'm a member of parliament. I make the law. I know the constitution. I'm not going to be violated because I'm a member of parliament. Mm. Nowhere in the constitution does it say members of parliament must be violated, even when it is openly clear. My brother, you ought to agree with me. Mm. I've got a right to be heard by the Human Rights Commission. It received complaints about me. It must give me an opportunity to make representations mm. so that I justify the things I said. They make a conclusion without listening to me. Yeah. All right. What type of democracy is that, where the other side is not being heard? Is it because I'm an African? Is it because I'm a, a child of a domestic worker that my view doesn't matter? 
that my side of the story doesn't matter. That the white man complained. And because the white man complained, his views are supreme than mine. I'm not going to allow that. Not from a human rights commission, not from anyone, not even from the courts. The courts hear hardened criminals. They hear this, their side of the story. I'm making a political articulation. And human rights commission, all they can do, what do you mean by this? At least even if they've taken a decision, let them be seen to be, you know, like listening to the other side. That's all right. I'm saying. And so you say this was political commentary that you it's a making. political commentary I, I would like it's for a the free viewers, speech I, I would like for the viewers yes. to take a listen and then you and i will, yes. will continue That's in a fine. moment let's have a listen to the leader of the eff why are you scared that anything that stands on the way of the revolution it must be eliminated in the best interest of the revolution and we must never be scared to do that. The founding manifesto of the EFF says we will take power by all means necessary. And therefore revolutionaries, when confronted by that situation, should never think twice. Cowards are not for the revolution. The EFF must be known that it is not a playground for racists. That any racist that plays next to the EFF and threatens and beat up the membership and the leadership of the EFF, that is an application to meet your maker with immediate effect. You were beaten by a racist. And you never did anything. Let's hope this new leadership will make a follow-up on that racist. Because there must be a follow-up on that racist. I'm not asking you to do what I've not done. When a racist confronted me at Winnie Mandela's funeral, I did what I was expected to do. Because I was not scared of a white man. You get beaten by white people here and you call yourself an organization of Fanon. Racism is violence. And violence can only be earned by violence. Not any other necessary means. It must be confronted by how it is. As a black person, I hate racism. Say you agree I with me. You do. There's with nothing you being. disagree with. Them. I hate it with my whole There's being. There's nothing you but disagree with. Them. Is that the best way for the EFF to deal with violence and racist behavior? But like Fanon deals with that in the Ratchet of the Earth. If you intensify your reading of Fanon, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The only way to add violence is to deal with it in a violent way. And racism is violence. What do you do, Koli? Because they never hear anything. The only language they know is the language they speak. So they ought to be put at their right place. Are you, are you saying I am, I am a racist by saying no racist must play next to the EFF? No. Am the, I racist? The issue here is incitement. What am I inciting? That, when you that say no racist must play next to the EFF. Is that a, an incitement? No. And, when you and say if they dare do that, nip it on the bud, cut the throat. Of racism when and you white say, supremacy. When you say to the members of the EFF in that PPA that you must follow up, I expect you to follow up yes. on that racism. Yes. That's incitement. How is follow up an incitement? Yeah. What must I follow up on? They must follow up on what happened to the racist and they must intervene decisively. What does that Since mean? Since when is a follow up a, a problem? When I proposed a girl today, I follow up, it's, it's an incitement. When I follow up, you, the English of uh, 4 or 5 has changed. That follow up means violence. That's a distortion of the word. They must follow up on what happened to that racist who beat up not only black people, mm. black, black women. The white men till to date, mm. despite the fact that cases were opened, is still not arrested because it's a white man. 
Had it been a black guy who unleashed such unjustifiable violence against a white woman, what would have happened to that black person? We ought to confront racism everywhere else where it raises its ugly head. And if it has not been attended to, it must be followed up. So that no one dares to repeat such a similar mistake. In a country that is already battling with uh, violence, I mean, I don't have to tell you the stories that we have been reporting on in the past yes. week, pa particularly the violation of women at the hands of men. We are a country that is struggling with dealing with violence. Is that the best way that the EFF thinks it can resolve such matters? What option are you giving me? Where are you when an African woman is beaten with a cricket bat? Where is the Human Rights Commission? The picture is there. If anything, you can't even play it here because it's not favoring a narrative. But the, the video is there of a white, well-built African male beating up an African woman with a cricket bat. It's not an issue on the ENCA. Because the black lives, I mean, in the, in the 4 5, the black life doesn't matter. I'm not going to buy into that narrative that black people must be beaten up and the next thing I must keep quiet. I'm not going to keep quiet. Do anything you want to do to me. I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm not going to allow the white Africaners in particular to perpetuate institutionalized racism in South Africa and we keep quiet and we're being, you are being silenced by institutions that must be coming into our defense. Where is the Human Rights Commission for that woman who was beaten there? Where are they? Do they think we're a soft target? Let them do what they want to do. We're All not right. going to apologize for that. And so final word is that there's not, con there's not going to be any apology and all roads lead to equality court. I'm not going to any equality court. They can go to equality court. What am I doing in equality court? You take me to equality court without listening to me first? Huh? What happened to those commissioners there who say they are standing for human rights? Why can't they stand for my rights? That a, a, an, an Indian legal, uh, a head of legal uh, in human rights uh, uh, commission decides on his own, because he thinks he's a, he's a deputy white, on his own, to find me guilt and tell me to apologize without listening to me. They've done it to Zuma, they can do it to me as well, I don't care. But I'm not going to be a puppet of people who are advancing white supremacy and, and want to uh, legitimize their nonsense mm. at the expense of my rights, the rights that so many people died for. I'm not going to compromise on that. All right. Let's move on from that and talk yes. about these provincial assemblies, yes. people's assemblies. You have crisscrossed the country. And one of the issues I'd like to pick up on is that you have berated the structures for not electing enough women into leadership structures. Why do you think that behavior persists? Well, we come from a patriarchal society. Mm. And therefore, the problems of our society will always show their ugly faces in our organizations because we are made of members of that society. Mm. But those who join the EFF, should know that by joining the EFF, you admit that you are an advanced detachment of society. And therefore, the illnesses of society should not characterize the outcome of a meeting of the EFF. Mm -hmm. So it is so unfortunate that you will have a province like Eastern Cape electing five males into the top five. And by the way, it's the only province. All provinces of the EFF have elected women into structures of the EFF without any intervention. Mm. That is the only province I've had to uh, uh, speak out against in, in line with the EFF principle of constructive self-criticism. Yeah. So when I criticize them, I criticize myself. And as a result, the World Council met yesterday, received the report of the Eastern Cape, and a decisive intervention will be made in the best interest of making sure that nothing compromises the principal position of the EFF when it comes to gender equality. But otherwise, generally, all of them went so smooth. You have never seen such an organization in the past decade organizing such a smooth sailing, well-oiled machinery uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. Highly organized, democratic, 
No intervention, no interference by the leadership. For those provinces that still find it problematic or find it difficult to infuse women into leadership structures, do you think that legislating the gender parity uh, rules, for example, yes. will possibly fix the problem? We are going to propose that in our next National uh, People's Assembly, that the officials uh, of the EFF, there should be a certain percentage. But with regard to the whole structure as a PCT or RCT or BCT or uh, the Central Command Team, the composition of it all at the end must be 50%. So we now realize that they are now using the officials to exclude the women. So let's also take it there. It's a principle that we are prepared to force it through their throats. And if they don't like it, the door is open. We are not going to sit in an organization with people who still see women as not being equal yeah. to them. Because we come from a perspective that women are equal and they are capable to lead. And therefore, you can't have a conference constituted by 60% of women. Because that conference was constituted by 60%, 60 percent six zero percent of women and still doesn't come with at least one woman in the top five it, it was an embarrassment as you build these structures in provinces and i like to use the word yeah. grassroots yeah. because the eff i think for some time has been wanting to build what is called organic uh, structures in the various provinces does it give you a sense now that you stand a fair chance of taking over some of these provinces and if so which ones are easy pickings for the EFF? Well we struggled a lot in the coastal and we're seeing a huge improvement in uh, KZN uh, and some slight improvement in the Eastern Cape mm. but the elected leadership in particular the chairperson of the Eastern Cape inspires a lot of hope and confidence in us that we are going to turn things around in that province. He's got the necessary energy, he's got the necessary vision, and he's driven. And uh, uh, for some time we needed someone with that type of energy who is uh, having a conviction of his own and he's driven by, by that. Yeah. We've got new leadership in the Western Cape. Okay. Um, we hope to see uh, uh, some growth there, even with one million membership recruitment, in the Western Cape, we are still not doing well uh, with regard to that. Uh, we have had reflections yesterday. Some form of intervention is going to be made with the new leadership. We are confident enough that we will turn things around. So these conferences, for me, have given some sense of hope and they have revived uh, something in me that it is not all lost. We are not uh, stuck. We are going to make a huge progress, and Houghton comes number one. Uh, when it comes to one of those provinces that uh, we are going to be targeting, Wisen in Lose is now finished in Limpopo, has done a great job uh, in Limpopo. In 95% of the wards of Limpopo have existing branches of the EFF with real members. And uh, now we are going to take them to PPA. They are the last ones who are now going to be taken to the PPA. He thinks when he finishes, Limpopo is going to rest. We are going to redeploy him back into Jobek mm. to work into Gaudi. Remember the people of Limpopo, Jobek and Gaudi is one thing. Mm. So in, in Gaudi to uh, now work with the structures of the EFF because we want this province. Mm. And uh, we want it at all costs. We are going to do everything in our power to take this province and turn it around so that our people in Gaudi start benefiting from uh, the fruits of economic freedom. How do you respond to commentators who say the growth of the EFF has somewhat stagnated? It's stagnated because it's neglected some sections of the population. Well, the sections that are neglected are very insignificant. Um, we, I just said to you now, we exist in the 90% of all the words in South Africa. So there is no section that uh, is uh, uh, neglected. We are running a well-oiled machinery so, so and we're highly focused. So confusion of Indian people, colored people, white people 
inside the EFF. I will say the Kalat community is part of the EFF community in their huge numbers and Africans. Very small, tiny uh, numbers when it comes to the Indians and the whites. Why we, we have not neglected them. They come from a position of privilege and we do not represent that. We represent the oppressed and the whites were not oppressed and the Indians were the least oppressed mm. and therefore uh, do not see any need to join the struggle that seek to liberate the oppressed because they are not oppressed. Mm. So they are not really our target market. If they come and want to join a just cause of liberating those who are not uh, liberated, even when they are liberated, mm. they are more than welcome uh, into the EFF. The EFF is an anti-racist uh, organization and welcomes everybody who subscribes to a leftist perspective and seeks to expropriate land without compensation and deliver economic freedom into the hands of ordinary people of South Africa. The reason I'm asking you these questions has to do with your recent attendance in Lesotho yeah. of the inauguration of the Prime Minister there, yeah. Sam Matekane. His party was only formed in March. And the groundswell of support has now propelled him to be in office. Yes, he didn't get a majority in parliament, but he was just shy of five votes. Yeah. I'm saying to you that South Africans are yearning for something new in this country. If the ANC itself, which has been in government for the longest time, mm -hmm. is itself admitting that it is in crisis, <laughs> we ordinary South Africans can only be desperate to be taken out of that quagmire. Mm -hmm. Why is the EFF not a credible alternative? The EFF, it is a credible alternative. I've got more votes than some Matekani, so you're comparing apples with oranges. I've got more votes than him. So if, if, if I was in Lesotho, I'll be a prime minister plus a president at the same time. So, because I've got more votes. So, the population of South Africa, in comparison to the population of Lesotho, it's unfair. So, the EFF seeks to introduce a radical perspective. And the only way to do that is to do it ground up. You ought to conscientize society. And conscientizing society is not a 21st birthday party. It is a process that takes forever. Because you are going to introduce things that people are not used to. So don't do a rush-rush arrangement. Educate people politically. And that's what we're doing. When we said we're recruiting one million members this year, and then next year we are uh, politicizing them, in 2024 they become the best of the best crown forces of the EFF, well equipped with tools of analysis. So we are building something qualitative, and, and, and that will translate into a quality government that will be supported by our people. You don't want to take government today, expropriate the land, the same people who voted for you turn against you because they didn't understand the policy you advocated. How do you respond to a skeptic who says a party that is going to take South Africa out of where it is right now to the next level is yet to be born? Because that's someone who clearly does not see an option in what is on offer right now. If people decide to be blind, it's not a problem. Everybody can see that... EFF is the government in waiting in South Africa. Instead of comparing us with the Prime Minister of Lesotho, Sam, compare us, with the, compare us with the ANC. How many years did it take them to get into power? And no one has ever been impatient with them because they, everybody understood that the ideas that the ANC represented at the time will take forever for people to get in their numbers into the revolution and fight for democracy. How so, many years, uh, sorry to cut in, how many years did it take Hakainde Hichilema, who is now president in Zambia, to be president there? So I'm telling you, it took him forever. He was actually living in prison. I had to go fight for his release from prison because he destabilized the convoy of the president. He tried many times. H&H mm. uh, &H tried many times. And uh, he failed. The one in Malawi, has been trying as well, uh, and he failed. Uh, in Zimbabwe, look at the Zimbabwean situation. Are you going to say to me, uh, the party that is going to liberate Zimbabweans is still to be born? It is the new ideas 
that people take time to buy into. But once they bought into those ideas, the tide will turn and will turn for the benefit of our people. So, again, you can talk H&H &H in Zambia and talk uh, Malawi. In comparison to South Africa, the numbers are very, very high. Mm. And those are the numbers that we seek to convince ourselves uh, in the EFM. Look at, I mean, the Zimbabwean situation is, a, is, is one example where you should be saying, the ground is fertile. The people by now, there is no currency, there is no infrastructure, there is nothing. Mm. The people by now should be turning to an alternative. There is an alternative in Zimbabwe. Why are the people not turning into an alternative? It is because it takes forever for people to warm up uh, uh, to new ideas. And uh, 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 politics move like an elephant. You don't have to be impatient with them. But once they've passed, they leave a significant mark. In a way, this conversation leads us to the coalitions. Yeah. And your chance to demonstrate what an EFF government would look like in Ekuruleni, those chances were dashed this week. And that's because your candidate withdrew. Why did that happen? Well, if our candidate had not withdrawn, the ANC candidate was going to win. And uh, we didn't want that. Um, we want Igurulene to demonstrate to our people that we've got capacity to lead um, um, uh, in a manner that is beneficial to the uh, citizens of that particular city. So it's not because we were cowards. We were looking forward. Uh, the young man was readily available. Uh, uh, to lead and uh, who was uh, leading negotiations on behalf of the EFF? Is, uh, Floyd, uh, the deputy president of the EFF. Mm. Uh, you know, a night before, they had a meeting with Mbalula, uh, with T.K. as a provincial secretary of the ANC, with uh, Panyaza Ali Sufi. An agreement was reached that the EFF is going to take, a night before, mm. the EFF is going to take government uh, in Ikurule. And we, we walked in uh, knowing that we are going to take over government in Igurulene. So the, no one came back to us to say, uh, no, there is a change of plan. Yeah. What do we see? We see a man with a bruised ego uh, called Muzwandile Masina uh, nominating a person uh, against the EFF uh, candidate. Remember, these are politics of numbers. You ought to think quickly mm. of what are they trying to do. Now that the EFF has accepted, they bring in a candidate, and then the DA is brought in a candidate. So the EFF will vote for its candidate, the DA will vote for its candidate. The ANC has got more numbers, even without the EFF, because of the so-called top seven parties that have clapped with the ANC. Yeah. So they will emerge. So what do you do? You destabilize these dishonest uh, animals, or you think you are smart. Young men withdraw. Let's eat them differently. No so, one gets nothing. So there was an agreement Absolutely. with the ANC yes. that the ANC would support an EFF candidate in Ekurule. I'm mentioning names. I'm not even mentioning ANC. Mbalula, Fikile Mbalula, TK Nisa, Panyaza Lisufi, Floyd Shibambo, Marshall Jamin. They were in a meeting a night before. A deal was sealed. But before that, T.K. Nisa came to see me, and we agreed that, okay, that's fine. You guys were going to give you Joe Beck. And then once we have given you Joe Beck, we are taking a Gurule. That principle was taken to the two parties. We agreed. Mm. What happened when it came to their turn? Because they are dealing with honorable men in the EFF. We gave them Joe Beck. And we, 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 T.K. called me many times on the eve of that voting. I said, T.K., I'm not a coward. I don't shake a hand if I don't mean it. Mm. If I didn't want to vote for the ANC, I was not going to shake your hand. Don't call me. I agreed that the EFF is going to vote for the ANC. It will vote for the ANC. Because I know what I'm leading. Mm. It happened exactly like that. When the turn to vote for the EFF came in Ikuruleni, what did the ANC do? It postponed the meeting. Then I told Floyd and them, I said, the crooks have started now. When it is our turn, they postpone a meeting. We tried the second attempt. They 
uh, uh, put a candidate against us. Only I was brought up by a, a, a Greek white man called Jimmy Contompelitos. He passed away. Who used to did, do deals of billions. He never signed the paper. He shakes a hand and he says he's done. You will never, you will never not get a cent from him as long as he shakes your hand. I operate like that. I shake your hand, I mean it. I've never, I, as I move around this country, my conscience is very clear. I never shaked anybody's hand if I don't mean it. And I'm not a pretentious person. You like me for who I am or you don't like me. I tell you if I agree and I tell you if I don't agree. So that's the problem with the ANC leadership. It lacks credibility. It shakes hands even when they don't mean what they're saying. I called him Balula. What type of a man are you? Who go around shaking hands for the things that you don't mean? It's cowardice. Let's take a break. When we return, we're going to pick up on this discussion around what clearly sounds to me like a rejection of a partnership with the EFF when it comes to coalitions. Because you have been talking at these assemblies and there is a, a particular view that you hold which goes beyond political parties making agreements. It now talks to the voters themselves. You've had some choice words. We're going to continue in a moment. You're watching News Feed AM. We are in conversation with the leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Julius Malema. And just before we took a break, we are discussing coalitions. Mr. Malema, you have been rejected as a formal coalition partner, not only by the Democratic Alliance, lately by the ANC. That leads to a question about what you see the role of the EFF being in the coalition arrangement, if indeed what political pundits say is the future, at least for the time being in South Africa, that coalitions are a thing of the future. Well, uh, rejection, you can use such word when it comes to the TA, and we've accepted that. The ANC didn't reject us. It just became dishonest. Um, it created an impression that it is with us, and... Um, uh, and then it became dishonest. So you must call them for who they are. They are dishonest people. Yeah. Uh, Can I quickly interject yeah. there for a moment? Yeah. Does that mean that you agree with Mzwandi Lemasina, who was on another platform last yeah. night, yeah. who said you can't give power to a 13% party because how are you going to explain yourself to the voters? That's a rejection in my eyes. No, 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 no. Muzandile Masina in that platform sounded like a regionalistic homeland leader who's not different to Matanzima and to Mpepu because he said you can't uh, give Ikuruleni in exchange for Joe Beck because Ikuruleni is a separate thing. But the man calls himself a leader who comes from a unitary uh, organization that supposed to look at those metros and regions as coordinating structures, but yet all of us belong to the same country. So we can actually debate a Jobek in exchange of Eastern Cape, by the way, I mean, a, a PE, a Kaveha, by the way, mm -hmm. because we are unitary organizations. But I don't blame him. He's a regional leader who has never been anything significant, elected national. So he wouldn't know what how national works. That's why he speaks more a lot about region because he's a regional leader. So well, he is a regional mentality. Position. Prematurely because he, he lacks national consciousness. Yeah, he's got a regional consciousness. So you only know for Solaras and things like that. So that's why he speaks like that. So I was not shocked when he sounded like Ramudike of Leboa. So so he 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 he's no national material. Uh, that's why he wouldn't understand or comprehend what it takes for a province and national to come into the picture and say, to have these things balanced, this is how we're going to do the trade-offs. So it is not a rejection. And because the discussions were taking uh, place at a high level where he, said he doesn't see it, mm -hmm. he, he, may, he may have a difficulty comprehending uh, what is happening. So I, I feel very sorry for, for Muzwandile because 
he's very uh, destructive. He's a self-destructive. Mm. And he will have himself to blame very soon. Because you don't do that as a leader who wants to become a, a leader in higher structures. You must allow other leaders to lead you. You don't say it's my way or the highway. What did he do? He went to take soil and sat on the dinner table. If I'm not going to eat here, no one is going to eat and put the soil on the food. Yeah. Because he behaves like a spoiled bread. So we, we, we don't care about what Bifus Muswandile holds. We have met with national leaders, with provincial leaders, a level within which he has never said, and if he did see it, he said through co-option and not through elections. So no one national has ever demonstrated through raising of hands that we've got confidence in Muswandile to lead national. So he doesn't understand national dynamics. Let me go straight to the heart of my question. Yes. Recently you said that voters should decide which party they want to govern and that party they should then elect instead of going in these backroom deals trying to form Absolutely. coalitions. Yes. Is that your response to perhaps what will likely come in it's, 2024? It's, it, it, the, the voter must take responsibility as well. Because we're in this compromise because the voter became undecided. And as a result, we are now engaged in permanent negotiations, which leads to some sense of instability in this metros. But if a voter had voted and said the ANC must take or the EFF must take, we would have occupied our rightful place. These negoti unending negotiations are necessitated by the fact that the voter said, I'm not going to decide. All of you, you go there and you'll see from amongst yourselves how you are going to lead that municipality. So we find ourselves in this situation because of the voter. Can you really if the, blame voter the voter did not... Yeah? Can you really blame the voter for a lack of trust, I should think? Because with this arrangement of coalitions, they are in a way sending a message to say you need to, you need to check each other in order, or you need to hold each other accountable so that we have a, a government that is free of corruption, because that's perhaps what is at the center. That's of what you gave us. It's not, not, not to use the words blame. The voter gave us that, and we're dealing with it. We're not running away from it. We're dealing with it. Um, uh, so the voter said, I want to see how best you can cooperate and work together. And that working together would mean the sharing of power. Yeah. That's why the arrogance of the DA and that of the ANC, I don't understand where it comes from because none of them got a direct mandate. I mean, for someone to say a party of 13% is given the whole municipality, we had an executive mayor of uh, Nelson Mandela coming from a party with two seats from the UDM uh, in the past. And this is a person who says, I wrote a book about coalitions. I was even worried. I, I thought someone should have read that book of his first and said, uh, in, in, in which chapter do you say this? He would not even know his own chapters and what he says in his own <laughs> it chapters. Sounds to me, so, it sounds to me yeah. that the words of Mzwadi Lemasina are quite stinging. And that's simply because he said a 13% party. That hurts you, doesn't no, it? No, no, it doesn't. I'm saying a person who says, he has intellectually contributed to the geography of knowledge in relation to coalitions mm -hmm. can speak like that. Because if indeed he wrote a book where he, atti he attached his, 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 his name, he would have known that a party of whatever percentage in a coalition arrangement can emerge as a mayor. Did what? he write the book? <laughs> I'm not going to answer for him. So, le let's go to... I want to end this discussion now around coalitions. But come 2024, if the ANC is brought under 50%, a possible scenario that's playing out in municipalities now will now play at national level. Are you saying that you're not going to be a participant there in negotiating coalitions? But we're participants now. If you say what is this taking place now mm. is what was going to take place at province or national, then you should include us there. We are participating now. We never said we can't negotiate with the DA. The DA 
rejected us because they think the racists who are voting for Freedom Front is on the basis of them working with the EFF, yeah. and therefore they left the EFF so that they can re reclaim the votes of the racists. But the racists keep on leaving them, whether they are working with the EFF or not. So they've become irrelevant in that sense. But we are talking, we, we are more than willing to talk to Helen Zille. He, she can call us all the names she wants to call us, mm. but we understand the coalition politics very well. Because we come from the student movement, by the way. There were points where we uh, won elections in the SRCs in the universities and were short of one vote uh, 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 in, in the University of Teflop, for instance. Mm. Uh, uh, and that one vote is with SCO. And the SCO says, no, we can give you one vote, but we want to be president. We've had to compromise and give the SCO, the president of the SRC, with one seat. Okay, so, all right. We are more than willing to talk. Why? We know that coalition politics survive through permanent engagement of parties involved. So okay. even the ANC, we're more than willing to talk to them. We're not going to vote for their motion of no confidence now. We were supposed to stand today for uh, APEC uh, uh, chairperson's committee. Uh, we withdrew because there's now no clear agreement now with the ANC. But the ANC, if it wants to come back to the EFF, they will have to do one and one thing only. They have to go and put the mayor of Ikuruleni first of the EFF. Then we can talk. So Tanya Campbell's fate there. I, we don't have any relationship happen. with that woman. We don't have anything with her. We don't care if she wakes up tomorrow or anything. We don't care. We really we don't have anything to do with her. And that vote was not for her, was not for her, was to resolve political differences that we are having with these dishonest people. If a motion of no confidence comes in Johannesburg, which way will the EFF go? Now. Now. We'll, we'll vote if we're in defense of the DA. Until the ANC comes back to the table and delivers what it has committed in Ikurule. There's no motion of no confidence that is going to be supported by the EFF in Joburg. There's nothing ANC, Dada, the mayor of Joburg, mm. is going to be the shortest saving mayor of Joburg in the history of this town. He will have his own party to blame. He will have Mzwanle Masina to blame, not us. All right. We were ready to deliver him, but his dishonest comrades played us, and they thought we don't have it. And... Yo, the court of this woman, of DA in Johannesburg, came in very handy. When the court reversed that, and they failed to deliver Ikurleni, I was like, yo, Winnie Mandela is not sleeping, he's working 24 hours. Let's talk about Palapala. Yes. You've made submissions to the three-member panel. What's your most compelling evidence there? Well, we've got uh, uh, the utterances of the president in Polokwan, mm. admitting that in the ANC conference in Polokwan, admitting that there was money that was stolen at his house, he hasn't opened the case, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, those monies were in a form of cash, uh, and therefore were not declared at the Reserve Bank, foreign currency not declared at for, uh, a Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. Reserve Bank itself responded to the EFF and said, "We've sent the questions to the president to ask." Uh, what happened to this foreign currency? Because as far as we are concerned, we don't have it on our record. That's evidence enough that the president was in possession of undeclared foreign uh, currency uh, to the Reserve Bank. And the president admitted that I was uh, in, a, in a position of uh, such foreign currency. But it was from the proceed of uh, sales of a uh, game. Now, president admitting again against his... Uh, a code of ethics that he's engaged in a business outside what is expected of him. Yeah. So meaning he's a part-time president. And the constitution says the president, I mean, the, the code of ethics says the president can't do any other thing except being the president of the Republic of South Africa. So would you accept any other outcome? Ex would you accept an outcome that says the president does not have a case to answer 
based on what you are saying are your strongest submissions to that panel? I will not accept that because the president gave three different uh, 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 answers uh, to that uh, 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 issue. I uh, spoke about a man who came uh, from an uh, uh, unidentifiable place and gave the money to the, his PA wanting to buy uncle or buffaloes or something like that. Then there was an auction, we auction without a date, an auction. Yes, you know, there is, so once so many visions have been presented, you've got a question, and we've got, you've got a question to answer. Mm -hmm. What is the real vision of, uh, of these monies? And, and we strongly believe that the president uh, uh, should be held accountable. So if okay. the panel say, comes and says it's not impeachable, there are many other different methods to hold the president accountable. Uh, one such method is establishment of the ad hoc committee. Uh, the other one is to put a motion of no confidence in the president, which requires a simple majority. Sure. Former President Mbegi responded to your suggestion that he could be working with Arthur Fraser in order to unseat President Ramaphosa. I suppose this is now at ANC level. Mm -hmm. He says this is rumor and gossip. First, let's start with where you get this information that former President Mbegi is working with Arthur Fraser. It's so interesting that it comes from you that uh, you want me to tell you your source, my sources and you will never do that yourself telling me your sources. So what is the point of me having people sharing such sensitive information with me if I'm going to loosely just release their names uh, like that? You know, uh, uh, there is a strong uh, uh, view, an allegation that actually President Mbegi, if he doesn't make it himself, his candidate is uh, uh, Jonas, the former uh, Deputy, Deputy Finance, Finance Minister. Uh, 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 but President Mbegi, uh, in all certainty, doesn't support President Ramaphosa. He doesn't. A and therefore, uh, the question should be asked as to, if he's not supporting President Ramaphosa, who is he supporting? At least President Zuma came out and said, I support Nkwasazana Dlamini Zuma. But President Mbegi doesn't support, he's not happy with President Ramaphosa's leadership. And that's why he keeps on uh, 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 punching holes in, in this leadership mm -hmm. and trying to expose its weaknesses throughout. President Mbegi has been quiet for some time. And, uh, and now is very critical and he even tells whoever cares to listen that no one will stop him from criticizing the leadership of the ANC. So, so he's not happy at all. Th and all of them, all former presidents, are not happy mm. with the current president. The reason I ask for whether or not this is credible information, it's less about the source, it's yeah. about the credibility of information, is that the last time you spoke to us about a similar matter, you, you said information that was frankly untrue and I want to remind you of that and no, I'm you are, hoping you are, you are engaged in a, a point scoring uh, if you call me here to do a point scoring I mean I know what you want to ask me you want what to ask it? me about uh, the Northern Cape uh, <laughs> John Block because you asked the president of the uh, no 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 the president of student command or Dunga of of uh, of uh, Houting. Mm -hmm. we raised that matter here mm -hmm. and you are uncertain and you, based on that, we left no, I here. wasn't uncertain. No, you were. I said, where I, do you I, get I got you so confused and you, your confidence dropped because you are not sure about what you are talking about. Let me so pause. We, no, Let but me pause we, no, no, we went to look for information hmm. and statements were released to clarify that point. What more do you want to achieve so, but if it's not point is, scoring? This is the problem. You called me here for point scoring. No. Yeah. I, I called you here. That matter has been clarified. If you didn't call me here because you want to shine like a beta X, that's fine. You can play it. <laughs> but I anticipated you. <laughs> you called me here to come and score points and not to share with the, with the public uh, 
what uh, 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 the person you are interviewing is about to share. So, 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 uh, so let's, let's let conclude. Let me share you know? the information. Do not seek by all means to outshine me. It's not your job. Your job is for me to share information and for the viewer to decide but if it's credible be, or but not. But it's got to be credible information. My brother, John Block was on the line of getting a parole. And the last information that I had was that he's getting I mean, a parole. So I took it, he's already out. Mm -hmm. And I said to you, he's out. And you said he's not out. And I persuaded you. And you conceded somehow. And then you, after that, looked for information. That matter was clarified. Why do you want to take us six months back if it's not a journalism of point scoring? Because I need you to admit that you told something. No, but truthful. when the matter... And so when you say things like this not, in not, future, not it's going to, it's going to, no, it's no, going to impact untruthful. on your credibility. It was factually incorrect. John Block was going to receive a... A, a parole. I even called the Minister of Justice after our discussion. And he said, no, where he was on the list of those who were going to be released on those things of COVID and, and, and. Yeah. But he did not meet the threshold and that's why he was not uh, released. So I was not off the mark and I had no intention uh, to mislead. I didn't come here with uh, um, information to mislead. You asked me that question. Remember, you don't give us questions beforehand. When you asked me, and then I have to search what was my latest information on John Block, and I gave you what I thought uh, was factual information. It was corrected, and when it was corrected, it was uncontested. Right. What more do you want? All right, let's conclude. <laughs> let's conclude. Let's conclude on the score of corruption. Yeah. There's um, a latest development, and that is that the, independent, the investigative directorate is now going to be made a permanent entity within the NPA. There does seem to be uh, some joyfulness, at least on the part of the NPA head, Shamila Batoy, whom I heard yesterday, and she says, this is certainly going to be a major boost in the fight against corruption. You share in that sentiment that corruption is finally going to be brought under control? No, it's not true. Shamila Bato is not there to fight corruption. She's there as a lackey of the president. They said, um, I forgot her name, the lady was heading some uh, special investigation unit in the NPA who resigned mm. uh, after a year without prosecuting anyone. Premium and Premier. the information I have is that the people she wanted to go after were people who were close to President Ramaphosa. And every time she wants to go after these people, her investigation were being made impossible. So Shamila is being put there to pursue those who do not agree with the president. Let me tell you what those who are in the position of president do when they take power. The first thing they take is the NPA. The second thing they take is SARS. And then the third thing they take is the commissioner of police. So once they get this, they sit in a comfort zone. Look at them, all of them. The one, somehow, all of them had a fight with the head of NPA or head of SARS or the commissioner of police because those are supposed to be their people. So they, when she was announced, the uh, head of NPA, we all celebrated, especially you in the media, that she's a corruption buster, she's going to arrest the Lord, the corrupt are worried about her. Where are we now? It has increased, it has doubled if not tripled under her watch. If there was annual performance conducted on her, I can tell you now, after a year, she should have been removed. All right. I'm saying <coughs> to you, there is a commissioner of police in KZN called Mkwanas, who's told the whole of South Africa, when the looters were going to loot SAB breweries, I got seven calls from ministers to go and protect breweries. But when the looters were going to loot uh, the shopping malls, not a single minister called me, including my minister. This person is talking about seven ministers that called him. He's not scared to call them out in public. Right. Because he's a career policeman. That is a man you need at, at the national level to fight crime and corruption. 
Why? They can't put him because they're not in control of him. They put Masemula there. Do you know that Masemula can't type an email? The whole police commissioner can't type an email. Let's end it there. Leader of the EFF, Julius Malema. Thank you very much for your time. And the people you speak about, they're not here. We will have to uh, see if uh, they are interested. Call him to interested. come and type an email. Call him here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're interested to come and give a right of reply. All right. Let me thank you very much thank you. for your time. Always a pleasure having on uh, on here. Julius Malema, leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters.